Hi, my name is Puneet and welcome to my channel Everyday Space. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Starship, the third SpaceX's rocket that they've developed. So, in the past, I've already done two videos talking about Starship and why it is really important to humanity. But those videos have been outdated because SpaceX is constantly updating their rockets and we might as well just do another one on it because they're even building Starship right now. So first of all, what even is Starship? Starship is SpaceX's fourth new rocket that they've developed and is by far the most powerful rocket in history even. It is a fully reusable rocket that is designed to take humans to the moon. So why are they even developing Starship? So like I said before, it is designed to take humans to the moon. Right now, they can even, they are quoting that they can send 100 people to the moon and Mars. So because of this, it is also fully reusable, which means that the cost of actually sending a single person to the moon or Mars would be much cheaper than like the Saturn V, which we had in the 1960s. It is going to be much cheaper because it is fully reusable and they don't have to build a new rocket every single time they fly one. So this is the main reason why they're developing. Also, if we need to send something really heavy into low Earth orbit, like a, even a new space station, Starship is the best rocket to do that because it can lift 150 metric tons into low Earth orbit. So what is in the current status of Starship? They've really started developing Starship over the last two years. And right now they've, they are building um, Starship number 20 and booster number four. These two are actually set to make an orbital flight this month. And there has been rapid progression in the last one year with so many tests of various Starships and boosters. Right now, Star Booster 4 and Starship 20 are almost done. And like I said before, they will perform an orbital test flight to see if the booster and Starship will actually go to orbit and come down safely. So because of this rapid development, we can expect to see Starship fly in the next two, three years even, even maybe even go to Mars by 2024, which is really ambitious, but I think SpaceX can do it, seeing how fast they just built a new rocket in the last two years. So hopefully we can see the rocket fly by next month and go to orbit and then come back, but also maybe even see it fly to Mars and even in the even the moon and by 2024 and even send humans there by maybe 2026. This would be great to see as we will now be ex establishing a Mars colony and a lunar colony. So humans will become an interplanetary species. So now with that we discussed the goals of Starship. Let's just see what Starship it actually is made out of and what are the technical details of Starship. So now, like I, said, like I mentioned before, let's see more about the Super Heavy Booster and the actual Starship itself. So now let's first talk about the engines, the things that actually power the rocket into space. So currently, in the Super Heavy Booster, there are 29 Raptor engines, and in the Starship, there's six of them. So three of them which are sea level optimized, and three of them which are vacuum optimized which means that three of them will be better opted to fly in space while three of them can be ignited inside the atmosphere. So it, in, in total, it's around 35 engines that they have installed currently on both the Super Heavy and the Starship booster. So the Super Heavy booster will be what mainly carries all, most of the fuel and propels the Starship into orbit. Starship is what carries all the payload, Right now, Starship and Super Heavy can lift around 150 metric tons into low Earth orbit. This is the most in history any rocket has ever been able to, to lift, even more than the legendary Saturn V rocket that made humans go to the moon in the 1960s. So right now, SpaceX is building the most powerful rocket, which is fully reusable, making it cheaper, the most, one of the most cheapest rockets ever built. So now, Let's talk more about the Raptor engines that they've developed. These Raptor engines, what makes them so unique is that they are propelled by methane. Methane has not really been used on rocket engines before, and this is the first time anything, any methane engine has actually flown on a rocket. Methane is actually very hard to contain and requires a complex engine to do it, but there are a few benefits of methane versus RP-1 or standard rocket fuel. 
that other rockets use. Methane is very abundant in Mars, which means that if you just mine water and get carbon dioxide from the air in Mars, you can produce oxygen and methane, both of which you, you need in Mars. Oxygen can be used for breathing and other resources, while methane can be actually used to get the rocket off of Mars and back to Earth. This is why SpaceX chose to develop a rocket that's made out of methane. So this is what makes the Raptor engine so good and so unique because it is made out of methane and is a really high weight to thrust ratio, which is more than 100. And SpaceX plans to have it at 200, which is the most any rocket has ever gotten. So now, how will we actually get to Mars even easier? One te technique that they will be implementing is in-orbit refueling. Basically, they load up a super heavy booster full of fuel and they load up a Starship that is full of payload. At, on the launch pad, Starship will not have any fuel on top of it, which means that it cannot get to Mars. But when it gets to orbit, SpaceX will send refueling tankers to Starship so that they will refuel it in orbit, like a tanker refueling a jet, uh, jet fighter in mid-flight. This means that Starship can carry much more payload to Mars because they don't have to carry all that fuel while on the launch pad and they don't have to sacrifice that payload. So this is one of the techniques that they're going to be using. So like I said before, because of using this technique, they can send 150 metric tons into orbit and maybe even send 100 people to Mars to colonize there. Another huge new thing about Starship is the material that they're building it out of. They're using stainless steel to build Starship which is very different than from other rockets, such as the Falcon 9 or the Falcon Heavy, which SpaceX has developed. They are using stainless steel instead of aluminum alloys. Stainless steel has a few benefits and a few disadvantages versus aluminum. The two advantages of stainless steel is that it is much stronger, cheaper, and it is way more thermal resistant than aluminum alloy. Aluminum alloy takes a long time to manufacture which makes it much, much more expensive than stainless steel. And SpaceX aims to have the cheapest rocket that they've ever built. That's why they're using stainless steel as a much cheaper option. Also, than aluminum alloys, stainless steel can withstand much higher temperatures, which is going to be vital because the re-entry temperatures when a rocket is coming back into the atmosphere can reach thousands of degrees Fahrenheit and even Celsius. So this means that they need less of a heat tile protection, even though Starship is still going to have one. And one disadvantage of stainless steel versus aluminum alloy is that stainless steel is almost four times heavier than carbon fiber and aluminum, which makes it much heavier and much more fuel needed to get into orbit. But SpaceX decided that they would rather have these two advantages, so they were willing to sacrifice the weight of stainless steel. So this is mainly, there's been a ton of changes and this, some of the facts in this video might even be outdated a month or two months into the future because SpaceX is constantly updating their rockets in a hope to get a better and more reusable rocket. So anyway, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and like to my channel. See you next time.